So when did that transition come where you're like, you know what, I really want to get into golf as a profession in the future? Well, it really honestly only happened maybe 10 years ago or so. Oh, okay. I, once I graduated from college, I went to Canisius College. I, I, I was a swimmer my whole life. So I spent a lot of time swimming. And then in college, I just got burned out. I did not want to swim anymore. I had no desire to go into a pool. So I knew Canisius had a golf team. So I went out and I played college golf. And again, it was addicting because it's not only golf, but it's, it's the competition. It's the, there's a huge difference playing tournament golf as there is to just playing regular golf with your buddies. I mean, Absolutely. the pressure, it's so much different. But after I graduated college, I spent you know a long time working, let's say, in the real world. But I always kept up the passion for golf. And really, the passion was in teaching and coaching. So I obtained a certification to be basically a part-time golf instructor. I built a my own website. I built my student base. I would go to local driving ranges and just basically what they called walk the line. So I would walk the driving range and a Tuesday, Wednesday evening, offering tips, passing out mm. business cards, really just trying to develop my own business. I got to a point about 10 years ago where I had an opportunity to kind of transfer, transfer into that or start teaching a lot more. And as I spent more and more time teaching, I started thinking, you know what? I may be able to make a career of this. Mm. Working nine to five in the financial services industry. It just, again, you get tired out sitting at a desk or behind a desk all day long. So I finally had an opportunity to transition into golf full time. Mm -hmm. And I've never looked back. It's been the biggest, the best decision I've ever made. So speaking of that and kind of how you transition this into your career again, in 2007, you started your own business, Jim Labuda Golf. And there was a focus on the golf fitness and golf psychology. Yes. So can you elaborate a little bit on that and what fitness and psychology play, starting with fitness, because I can go out there and play with my 86 year old grandfather and he kicks my ass every time, even though I'm probably in better physical fitness than mm -hmm. he is. But for some reason he still scores better than I do. So how does that play in? If fitness has become such a huge part of all aspects of golf from juniors to amateurs, right up through the professional ranks now. And really it started a lot with Tiger Woods. I mean, you see him in the gym working out, lifting weights and, you know, Brooks Kepka doing bench presses and Roy McIlroy doing 400 pound deadlifts. Right. I mean, these guys have realized that in order to improve in golf, they also have to take care of their bodies because they're hitting hundreds of balls a day, sometimes even a thousand. They're doing that five, six times a week right. along with the constant travel. So making sure your body is in the proper condition by being able to heal faster. You know, so it's not it's not just about lifting weights to hit the ball farther. That's what these guys are posting on social media. That's what you see. Mm -hmm. Golf fitness is more about stretching, mobility, flexibility exercises so that you can get to the proper positions in the swing. So going to the, the psychology aspect of it, what role does the mental game play in golf? That's a loaded question. Yeah, I know. yeah it how is. Do you, how do you stay calm? <laughs> If I could asking answer that question, I mean, <laughs> yeah, ask it for a friend. <laughs> it's one of the things that I strive to that everybody teaches these days is a pre-shot routine. That's how all these professionals can go up there and, right. you know, hit a drive in the 18th hole of the Masters when they have a one-shot lead and look like they do it every day. I mean, the guys really, their hearts are pounding, especially if you're going in there for the first time or, you know, you're not a Tiger Woods or a Jack Nichols and you've been in that position before. But having a consistent pre-shot routine allows you to repeat the same motions over and over. So when you're coming down the stretch and you've got a tee shot on the 18th hole, or even if it's an iron shot into an 18th green mm -hmm. to beat your buddy for who's buying the round of beers, you know, by going and having that consistent pre-shot routine, that establishes a repetitive action in your mind. On top of that, one of the things that I've been teaching a lot, and I teach this to a lot of my college players, is you've got to have a post-shot routine. So your reaction to the shot has to be the same every single time. You can't get too high, you can't get too low, because that's going to affect the shots going forward. So let's say for a post-shot routine, you finish your swing, you follow through, you watch the ball, great, your shot ended up five feet from the hole. You have really no reaction. People say, nice shot, thank you, you move on. You go to the next hole, you flub your shot, 
you shank an iron shot, you've got to kind of have the same reaction of, okay, one of the most important things I was taught is that the most important shot in golf is the next shot. Mm -hmm. You can't change what happened in the past. And that's, again, huge issue with these college players is that they they focus on something three holes ago. Oh, I can't believe I missed that putt or I hit that iron off the green three holes ago. Well, it doesn't matter. You can't fix that. You've got to move forward right. and focus on the next shot that you can control and the next thing that you can ha make happen in a positive way. Mm -hmm. So that pre pre shot and post shot routine should that be developed on the driving range and what does the driving range what should you be doing I guess from like a mental standpoint on the driving range to prepare you for that outing the pre shot routine is is huge on the driving range and I work with a lot of people over the winter months in developing solid pre shots routines because again you go to a driving range you buy a large bucket of balls you're through it in what forty five minutes mm -hmm. hour maybe tops you hit. <laughs> You're hitting ball after ball after ball, not really aiming. But yet when you go out on the golf course, it's different because there's targets. You have a green to aim at. You might have a bunker on the left you don't want to hit towards. You guys have been to the driving range, right? Mm -hmm. You know they put those flags out there for a reason. Yeah, That's the whole thing. Every time you put a ball down on the mat, you should go stand behind the ball, set up, aim, and make sure you're doing that on every single shot on the driving range so that when you go onto the golf course, that transitions into your routine on the golf course. The more you do it on the driving range, the more you practice there and get used to it, the easier it's going to become for you to do it on the golf course. 